Today I'm going to show you the best optimized settings for Warzone and Modern Warfare 2 after the Season 5 reloaded update and how I went from 109 FPS uh, using Activision's recommended preset to 211 FPS using my optimized settings and custom config file that I'll walk you through how to change, as well as some extra settings and answers from some of the most frequently asked questions from my last video. Uh, just very, very briefly, I want to say thank you so much for all the support. Um, our last video are, uh, got almost 100,000 views at this point um, and gained almost 1,000 subscribers. So just thank you guys so, so much. Uh, please, if this video helps you, uh, subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment if you have any questions or anything like that. Uh, anything like that helps so much with the algorithm pushing the video forward. But without uh, any more time, we'll go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing a lot of people are going to want to do is run a benchmark on the, on the game. So once you launch it, if you have the full version of Modern Warfare 2, uh, since they changed where the location is, I'll show you that very, very quickly. Uh, you're going to go on ahead and scroll down until you find the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer tab. You want to click on that to get into the, the the menu that you can find the benchmark in. So once you get in here, you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, and that's where you'll find the benchmark tab. So once you get in here, you can run a benchmark beforehand if you have the full game um, and see exactly what your before numbers were. If you don't have the full game, unfortunately, you can't run the benchmark. Uh, but these settings will still apply and still give you the best uh, FPS for you. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into the settings here. You're going to hit the settings menu, go into graphics. First thing we're going to be hit with is the display menu. Uh, from here, you're going to want to go ahead and have full screen exclusive. Me personally, I run on full screen borderless. Uh, shameless plug, I am a full-time streamer uh, on Twitch. I, I stream Monday through Friday on Twitch, most, most Monday through Fridays. Uh, so if you want to follow me in there, feel free to. But I run on full screen borderless when I'm streaming. Uh, mainly because I tab in and out all the time um, and full screen exclusive. It just kind of makes that a pain. Uh, but for the most FPS, you definitely want to have that on full screen exclusive. But for now, I'm going to leave it on borderless. Uh, display monitor, same thing. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through these settings really, really quickly. Um, just try to make sure the video isn't 25, 30 minutes long like it was last time um, and just kind of be more concise with things. So uh, display monitor, these should all be on default. Your, your gaming monitor, your GPU, Refresh rate should be max. Resolution should be whatever your default resolution is. I'm on 1440p, so that's what mine is. Uh, this setting, I will explain just very briefly. Uh, dynamic resolution, if you're really, really struggling to get FPS, um, I'm saying like 30, 40, 50 FPS. Dynamic resolution can help with that uh, by lowering the actual uh, resolution that it's rendering. Um, so you'll you'll get more FPS. You'll maintain, a, it will try to maintain a certain FPS that you set. Uh, but in, in turn, it's going to lower your re uh, render resolution, so it's, the game's going to look pretty bad. But if you're really struggling with FPS, you might want to try turning that on, see how you like it. Uh, but for most people, I recommend turning that off. Aspect ratio should be on automatic. V-Sync should definitely be off on both of these. Uh, custom frame rates, you definitely want to have this on unlimited, especially while you're doing the benchmark. Um, eco mode's a new, a new setting. I just leave it on minimal because it only affects... Uh, in the menus, it doesn't affect in-game, so minimal's fine. You can turn it off if you want. Um, and then brightness is pretty much just a uh, personal preference. I run mine at 55 because that's what my monitor seems to uh, look best at. And then gamma should be at 2.2 if you're on a monitor. I think 2.4 is for um, TVs, but if you're on a monitor, it should be on 2.2. Uh, so that should be everything on the display tab. We're going to apply those settings and then go to quality. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and turn this to off and hit apply. Uh, and then for the quality presets, we're going to set this to minimum just to get uh, pretty much all the settings where they need to be already. Um, next one underneath that's going to be render resolution. We're going to want to make sure that this is set to 100. Um, I forgot to mention that in my last video, so I put a pin comment on it. Uh, but make sure your render resolution is at 100 so you're getting the full native display of your, of your monitor. Um, for upscale and sharpening, you'll lose a little bit of FPS, uh, but I think it's 100% worth it by going to Fidelity FX CAS. This video is going to be settings to maximize FPS while also maximizing uh, visibility and clarity. Uh, so some settings I will have that will lower uh, FPS by a couple FPS, but in my opinion, it is well, well worth it for the extra visual clarity uh, to be able to see opponents from further away and behind bushes and all that kind of stuff. So most pretty much all pro players run this on Fidelity FX CAS at strength 100. So that's what I would highly recommend. Um, briefly, I'll touch on if you're looking for maximum FPS, you can definitely run DLSS, but it's kind of like... Um, that setting we were talking about earlier, uh, where it's going to lower your render resolution. Um, and it's just going to make the game look a little bit blurry, or you definitely, by by all means, will get a, way more FPS. Uh, but the game's just not going to look nearly as clear. It's going to be a lot harder to see enemies. Um, and this is just kind of 
a case by case basis. But like I said, for most people that enjoy playing the game at a, a more than competitive level, uh, Fidelity FX CAS is by far where you want to be. Uh, anti aliasing, I recommend running on Filmic. Uh, you'll lose a little bit of FPS, but again, when it comes to clarity, I think Filmic is the best option. If you're looking for raw FPS, um, regular uh, non Filmic will work as well. Uh, you want to set this to low. Some people can run it on normal. Like if you're on 1080p, normal will be a little bit better to smooth out jagged edges and stuff like that. So you don't see like the flickering. Um, you won't lose that much FPS. I think it's like three or four FPS. So it's not too bad. Uh, but I'm on 1440p and low looks perfectly fine for me. Uh, video memory scale. I'd probably recommend leaving this on default. I know from my personal system, because I have 12 gigs of VRAM, I can run on 65. Uh, but I would just recommend for most people just running it on default. Um, and you should be fine unless you have a really, really low end card that only has like four gigs of VRAM, then you might want to raise this to like 90. Um, but for most people, 80, 85 should be perfectly fine. Uh, the rest of these settings, we're going to kind of blow through a little bit. You can just pause the video if I'm going a little too fast. Um, but they, they all should be default since we all started with the minimum preset. Uh, one setting I would probably recommend changing, um, is the distant level of detail, setting it to high. Um, you'll see a little bit more uh, objects at a distance, a little bit more clear. So sometimes the bushes, you can see through them better at a distance and that kind of stuff. Uh, you will lose a little bit of FPS, but again, in my opinion, it's worth the visual clarity for that tiny little FPS drop. Um, again, all these settings should be pretty much set to the, the lowest they can go. Some of these settings we will have to turn off, like persistent damage layers, texture streaming, you might need to turn that off as well. Uh, make sure all these are set to their lowest option streaming quality. You'll probably need to set that to low. Default on the water. And then the other setting that we want to talk about is the spot cache. Uh, I run this on Ultra on any system that has a decent amount of VRAM. I'd say anything above six uh, gigabytes of VRAM. I'd run on Ultra. Anything lower than that, I'd run on high or maybe medium. Uh, but this setting does a lot with the stuttering and frame drops and all that kind of stuff. So the higher you can run it, the better. But if you don't have enough VRAM to run on Ultra, then obviously lowering that setting is going to be best for you. Uh, another setting we want to turn lower is the weather grid volumes. Turn that to off. Uh, video reflex low latency. Put that to on and boosted. I found in pretty much every situation, at least in Warzone 2, uh, most people are going to be CPU bound. Uh, so on and boosted is going to be the best option for you. Um, you can try on if you'd like, but on a boost, I found to be the best for most people. Um, depth of field, motion blur on both of them should all be off. Film grain should be off. So just to briefly show these settings again, if you want to pause, because I'm going too fast, feel free to pause and write these down or have the video playing in the background while you change them yourself. But those should be all the settings there. We're going to go ahead and hit apply on those settings and then go to the view tab. Uh, field of view is personal preference. I am on a 27 inch 1440p monitor. I'm going to run mine on 120. Uh, most people run this between 95 and 120, so somewhere in there should be great. Um, I also recommend running on affected to make sure that you're lowering your visual recoil when you have the higher FOV like that. Uh, weapon field of view and vehicle field of view I have on wide, as well as third person field of view I have on 70 to help uh, be able to ping targets when you're flying in the air um, when you're parachuting. Uh, these settings are actually super important that a lot of people miss, and it's actually on console as well. Uh, but changing your first person camera movement, which is essentially how much your screen shakes throughout the match, uh, defaults at 100. Make sure you set that to 50 on both of those. So you definitely want to have that there. Uh, one other quick setting I'm going to touch on for Steam users. I'm a I'm Steam user myself, but if you have the game on Steam, in the audio section, for whatever reason, uh, if you have all lobby on for your proximity chat, you'll actually be losing some FPS. It's a little bit better in this update. Um, I've only losing about 10 FPS, uh, but before I used to lose like 30. So changing it to friends only, you'll actually gain a little bit of FPS if you're on Steam. If you're on Battle.net, you don't have an issue at all. You're going to get 100% of your frames on all lobby. So that just a quick little note there. Uh, but that should be all the in-game settings that I recommend. So we're going to go ahead and close the game and get right into the config file changes, uh, which is the, the, the settings everyone's looking for. So we'll go ahead and get right into it. A lot of these settings are pretty much the exact same from my last video, uh, but I've done a little bit more um, to delve into exactly uh, what they are uh, and a, a few bit more configuration. So uh, you're going to open up your file folder and go into your documents tab. From here, you're going to double click on your Call of Duty folder, double click on players, and then you'll see the options.3.cod22.cst. If you have it on Battle.net, I believe, this will say options.3.codhq.cst, I believe. 
Um, it's just you want the one that doesn't have BR, CP, DMZ, MP, SMP, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you definitely want to have the options.3.cod22cst. Uh, we're going to go ahead and right click on it and we're going to open with and we're going to open it with Notepad. So you're going to click on Notepad or if you don't see Notepad here, hit more apps and find Notepad in the Microsoft Store. Uh, and then use uh, this app to open up CST files. Hit OK. This is going to open it up. One question I did have, and I'm going to run through this really quickly, um, is if you want to save your settings um, just so you have a backup or whatever the case may be, uh, some people didn't like the idea of deleting the folder altogether, even though when you delete the folder, uh, it, it comes back once you launch the game. Uh, it just comes back at a defaulted uh, settings. But you can go ahead and hit edit and hit select all. It will select everything. We're going to go ahead and copy all of the data in here. Uh, and then we're going to go down here and type in notepad. Open up a brand new fresh notepad. We're going to go ahead and paste. This is going to be the uh, your current config file. So this will be saved as something else. We're going to go ahead and save as, as um, copy of config. And we're going to go ahead and save that. So now no matter what changes you do to your current config file, you can always go back and uh, make those changes from your, your copy that you made. Um, so once we're in here, these are going to be the main settings we're going to talk about today. There are a couple other settings in here that you can adjust, but they don't really do much in FPS and they make the game look kind of funky. Uh, so these are the main ones we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one is going to be clutter max distance. We're going to go ahead and change that one. So we're going to scroll down uh, a little bit of the ways until you see the graphics here. And it's just going to be under graphics. Uh, we're going to look and see the clutter max distance. By default on low, it's set to 2500. We're just going to go ahead and copy the lowest value, which is 100. So we're going to highlight and copy, and we're going to replace inside of the quotation marks at 2,500 with 100. So we're going to go ahead and paste, and you'll see that those values match inside of the quotation marks there. Uh, the next setting is going to be the corpses calling threshold, and that setting is directly underneath the one we just changed. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to highlight and copy the lowest value that's available and paste it into the uh, quotation marks there. The third setting we're going to change is the sun shadow cascade uh that one's going to be a little bit further down this should be pretty much in alphabetical order so you should be able to find it uh through alphabetical order like that um i think i passed it real quick yep here we are sorry uh sun shadow cascade uh by default is set to high and there's no in-game setting to change that so we're going to go ahead and copy the low option you're going to go inside of this bracket highlight the word low all the way to inside of the comma all the way that cascade. So we're gonna go ahead, highlight and copy that and replace that in there. So we're gonna go ahead and paste so that that matches right there. Um, and the second to last setting is gonna be the texture filter, which is two underneath that. By default, when it's set to low is on anisotropic 2X, we're actually gonna to wanna to change that to linear. We're gonna go ahead and copy, highlight and copy the linear option and replace inside the quotation marks, just like we've done everywhere else. Make sure you do not choose the nearest option. Nearest uh, will make your game look like Play-Doh. So make sure you choose linear as the lowest option you choose uh, for the best FPS gains and best visual clarity. So make sure that's on linear. And the last setting we're going to touch on is the one everyone wants to talk about is the renderer worker count. Um, so I went ahead and tested a few more configurations like people were asking me to. And all of the older Intel CPUs without efficiency cores these are going to be the values you're going to want to input into this, into the quotation marks here. Uh, the way to find out which, which, how many cores and how many threads you have, you're going to go ahead and go to your uh, taskbar. You're going to right click and click task manager. Uh, from here, you're going to go ahead and click on the performance tab and then click on the CPU tab. You may have to click more details down below uh, to get a full breakdown here, but you'll be able to see what CPU you have um, as well as how many cores and how many processors and everything like that, which these are threads. Mine's a 10 core. 20 thread and it defaults in my thing to in my config file to nine uh, but with my tested values seven is going to give me the best fps and one percent lows so for my system i'm going to delete the nine and insert a seven uh, and that's going to be the best for me so whatever your uh, core count and thread count is for older intel cpus without efficiency cores these are the values you're going to use uh, for intel newer intel cpus with efficiency cores i don't have a full breakdown like i do here of all the different cpu options um, and the majority of them. Uh, but I did have my, my buddy who was very kind to spend some time with me um, and test these on his own system because he has a 12600K. I don't uh, have any newer Intels that I own personally. Um, his default was eight and uh, the best FPS for him was six. 
Uh, so if that theory holds in comparison to kind of the older ones as well, it looks like either two under the default number or the number of performance cores you have is going to be the best option to put inside the quotation marks in, in, your, uh, in your config folder. So if you have a 1200K, for example, uh, your default should be eight and the best should be six. So if you have a 12900K or 13900K and you have more performance cores, uh, you're either going to change the number to two under the default, depending on what your default is, or it's going to be the number of performance cores. I know a lot of people in the comment section said that number of performance cores work for them. That's probably what I would recommend is just doing however many performance cores you have. Uh, that's what you should put in the value here. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people had questions about AMD as well. Uh, I just don't have an AMD system. My other buddy that I have that has an AMD system, we spent a couple hours trying to test it. And I just couldn't get a conclusive result um, doing it over, over Discord. Um, so based off of what I found, it seems like the number of cores that you have on AMD should be the one that works best for you. But if you don't want to try it yourself, I'd probably just leave it on default. Uh, this render worker count does quite a bit for FPS, but it's not going to be game breaking if you can't change it. So leaving it on default uh, isn't the end of the world. Uh, so once you have that set and you decide on what number you want to run, you're going to go ahead and click file and hit save, which will save the file itself. Uh, the way to tell that it's saved is there's next to the options up here, you'll see a little asterisk. Once you hit save, the asterisk will go away and you'll know that it's saved. You'll be able to close out and start your game um, and go ahead and make sure everything's working fine. Um, one other thing I want to mention while we're here, just to quickly wrap up because the video is getting very long. Uh, two, two things I want to talk about in Windows because they're very, very important. I know everyone likes to skip on the Windows settings, uh, but background apps, uh, type it into your search bar, type in background apps, and it should pull up here. Make sure these are turned off. Uh, so many of these different apps that you have running uh, will just start updating randomly in the background. You get a lot of frame drops, a lot of frame stutter, um, latency spikes, all that kind of stuff. So just make sure your background apps, instead of being on and manually turn them off, just turn them all off. It'll, it'll help loads. Uh, and then the other one that I want to talk about is startup apps. Make sure you click on that. This is another huge, huge thing that everyone forgets about. Uh, make sure that any startup apps that you have are turned off that you don't need. So what a lot of people don't realize is any apps that you downloaded over the years, um, that they'll, they'll preset themselves to turn on the moment the PC turns on. Uh, so for instance, like uh, Spotify, it by default will turn on and just run the moment it might not pop up on the screen, but it'll be running in the background every single time I start the PC. Uh, same thing with Overwolf. Uh, this is for Minecraft. If you don't turn this off, you'll just have the Minecraft launcher running in the background, like as a background task. Uh, so you want to make sure you go in here. You could have, you know, less than this. You could have 40, 50, 60 background apps that all start up and they're just hogging resources. So definitely go in here. If you know what they are and you don't need them when the computer starts up, you can turn them off. If you, it won't prevent them from running. So if you need to, if for whatever reason you need to play uh, Minecraft, for instance, I don't have to go in here and turn this on. I just click Minecraft and it starts. This just prevents it from starting at the time the PC started. So uh, I know that's confusing for some people. So I wanted to highlight that and make sure this is a very, very important thing to do to make sure you don't have 50 different apps running in the background that you don't even know about. Um, so that should be it, I believe. Uh, just to reiterate, thank you guys so, so much for the, for the support on my last video. Um, I, I really, really appreciate everything you guys have been doing. Uh, again, a subscribe if you, if you'd like to see more videos like this, I have more video ideas coming in more settings videos, some other videos as well. Uh, if this video has helped you get some FPS, please, please, please like, uh, and comment down below any questions, anything like that. Any like and comment really, really helps the algorithm, um, and helps me out as, as a creator. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you again one more time. I do stream on Twitch Monday through Friday. So if you want to follow on twitch.tv uh, slash Brandon9 as well, uh, as well as I'm on Twitter, everything like that. So uh, thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.